Welcome to Better Than Ever Live, wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. Hope you're making today your masterpiece. On today's show, we're going to talk about arthritis, osteoarthritis specifically, and a potentially beneficial treatment that could help prevent or treat osteoarthritis called exosomes. I'll talk about what exosomes are. We'll talk about different types of exosomes and what role they appear to play so far as a treatment for arthritis. My name is Dr. David Geyer, triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert, and media medical expert. I help you feel, perform your best, regardless of age, injury, or medical history. Very excited to be here with you on this gloomy Thursday afternoon here in Charleston. Please understand, as always, I'm not giving you medical advice in this video. When we talk about exosomes, when we talk about osteoarthritis, Everything I say is meant for, for general information and educational purposes only as it pertains to exosomes specifically because it's not FDA approved and considered experimental. I am not telling you that you should do exosomes necessarily. I just want you to know about it. If you have comments about exosomes, comments about osteoarthritis, leave those in the chat wherever, whatever platform you're on, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, comment uh, how you normally do. I should be able to import those comments onto the screen and answer them, again, specifically on arthritis or exosomes. YouTube, don't put them in the comments. Put them in the chat because that's all I can see on Restream. Uh, people will still do it, I know, but feel free to share your comments. If you have questions or comments, it's usually questions, about other orthopedic injuries, surgeries, rehab, recovery, Join me tomorrow and just about every Friday for Ask Dr. Guy or Live. I'll talk about that more at the end, 12 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. When you leave a comment or question about exosomes or osteoarthritis, I would love for you to give your first name and where you're located as well as your comment or question. So like I said, I wanna talk about exosomes and specifically for osteoarthritis and cartilage injury. The exosomes are things, uh, are as we're gonna talk about, used for other illnesses, or at least they're being looked at for that, but I am interested specifically in their use in arthritis. This was a paper where I, a lot of this information is going to come from, a paper back in uh, 2020 from the International Journal of Biological Sciences. So first of all, I'm going to do this real quickly. I've talked about this a lot. Osteoarthritis is generally not a wear and tear condition, despite just about every orthopedic surgeon in America telling you that. And there probably is a little bit of a wear and tear component to it, but it is largely inflammation, an imbalance between the breakdown and the creation of cartilage, breakdown of the extracellular matrix, breakdown of the subchondral bone, largely due to inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and things that break down the extracellular matrix like matrix metalloprotease 3, MMP313, all do that. Now, the question is what role exosomes play? And they actually have a role in creating arthritis, but then hopefully a role in treating it. Exosomes are what are called, or they're a type of what are called extracellular vesicles. If you remember high school biology and all the different parts of the cell with the nucleus and the mitochondria and the ribosomes, extracellular vesicles are involved in leaving cells and communicating with other cells. So exosomes, which are a type of extracellular vesicle, are involved in cell-to-cell -cell communication, tissue-to-tissue -tissue communication, uh, both in maintenance of health and maintenance of disease. And it plays a role exosomes do in the development of osteoarthritis. But what we're starting to see, and we've, we've talked about stem cells a lot on various episodes of this show, mesenchymal stem cells specifically, where people go in, take bone marrow from the hip, and try to isolate some stem cells. So that's been around a while uh, in the world of osteo uh, orthopedic surgery for osteoarthritis and cartilage injury. But there's issues with stem cells. There's uh, whether you can culture them that's a problem. There's the there's very few actually live, functional, viable stem cells in your bone marrow when you're 40, 50, 60 years old. And one of the thoughts is why stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, actually might help for arthritis is through the exosomes inside those stem cells. So potentially, if you can give exosomes, you might not need a surgery to harvest the bone marrow and get the stem cells. So you basically have a cell-free way of doing stem cell therapy and hopefully regenerating cartilage and 
making, you know, being a cure for osteoarthritis. We'll talk about that here in a second. Exosomes are those little tiny vesicles inside of cells, 50 to 150 50 nanometers, so very, very so, uh, small. They're released by all of our cells in our body, play a role both in good and bad conditions, like I said, throughout disease. Now, um, when your or when early in science, we thought, oh, these are just ways cells get rid of waste. But that doesn't actually seem to be what they do because exosomes have DNA, RNA, lipids, proteins that play a, long, a large role, mRNA, microRNA, uh, long non-coding RNA that are involved in the immune response and intracellular communication. So that is why it's thought, hey, these may be a way that we look at a way to deal with osteoarthritis. Now, what they do again, they leave the cell, they go to whatever cell they're going to act on, they fuse with the cell reactor on that cell, start a signaling pathway, and then that's basically the exosomes do whatever they're going to do. So they release their recipients or their contents into the recipient cells. And that will get to one of the potential uses for exosomes that I'm going to talk about at the end. But again, we're going to talk about the good of exosomes, but they exosomes seem to play a large role actually in osteoarthritis, basically creating signals to other cells that potentially aggravate arthritis and break down the tissues. They have found that there's an increased number of immune or inflammatory related cells, that tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, and matrix metalloprotease that are stimulated by exosomes in osteoarthritis. So the exosomes in our cells, and they've done it where they isolate exosomes from joint fluid and then put them on healthy chondrocytes and they cause damage through those inflammatory mediators. So exosomes that are in our joint fluid, in our knees, in our hips, especially as you get 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, seem to be very catabolic and very inflammatory. So they not only are involved in creating the problem, but as now we're going to talk about, they may have a role in stopping that. Again, if you take exosomes from chondrocytes that are uh, treated with the interleukin-1 beta, it triples that matrix metalloprotease that is breaking down uh, the extracellular matrix. So exosomes definitely play a, a role in arthritis, but in terms of preventing it, in terms of treating cartilage injury, that's where this is really exciting. First of all, there's a lot of different types of exosomes. Let me just go through a few. There are exosomes within mesenchymal stem cells, and they have been shown to increase the expression of things that are good for the cartilage cells, type 2 collagen, aggregan, and they inhibit the catabolic ones, the matrix metalloprotease, and some of the inflammatory markers. So the exosomes from mesenchymal stem cells could actually inhibit the damage to the cartilage cells. You can also get exosomes, labs can, from embryonic stem cells. That's been shown to stop some of the damage to the extracellular matrix and actually promote cartilage repair in a number of different animal studies. And it does seems to do that by increasing the synthesis of type 2 collagen. You can get exosomes from fat tissue, adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells. And that's been shown, again, significantly reduce those inflammatory factors, significantly reduce those catabolic proteins and enzymes that are damaging the cartilage. And then there are uh, exosomes from what are called induced pluripotent, I can't even talk, stem cell derived mesenchymal stem cells that look extremely beneficial at stopping arthritis. And that's been shown in a mouse model, basically completely stopped the damage of the cartilage cells and actually increased the proliferation of those cartilage cells. So what's going to be really interesting about this going forward is how they're used. There's, they're already looking at, so they right now you can inject them, like you can get them from amniotic fluid. I know physicians that get them from amniotic fluid, inject them into the knees and they 
do very well at relieving pain. They've been shown, at least in early studies, decrease inflammation of the lining of the knee, of the lining of the joint, decrease uh, or increase remodeling of the subchondral bone, the sort of the craters that form in arthritis, and growth and proliferation of cartilage cells. So that's particularly good. But the next step of this is going to be delivering them in ways that they become you know, resurface the knee and make it, or other joints, and make it smooth again. So they're working on 3D scaffolds to basically serve as a structure, and then the exosomes are released over a period of time to generate cartilage cells. They're looking at 3D printing for cartilage tissue repair using exosomes in the 3D printing. So it'll be, it'll be structure, structural and cellular to optimize the functions of the exosomes, growing the cartilage cells, proliferation and differentiation, uh, protecting that extracellular matrix, stopping the uh, inflammation in the joint, but also have a structure in which to mimic normal cartilage. And then the one I told you about cargo, there's talk of using exosomes as a way to deliver drugs, specifically through nanoparticles. Exosomes, again, are released from cells. They, are, they bind to cell receptors of other cells, release their contents in them. If there's a way to deliver very specific drugs for osteoarthritis in the exosomes, then they get to those cartilage cells. You potentially could have an enormous, enormous uh, benefit not just for arthritis, for any number of different diseases. But where I think this is headed is not only do I, I, I really hope exosomes are going to prove to be a game changer in regrowing cartilage, making cartilage new again, but also uh, to personalize it. You can you know, maybe add certain drugs to certain ones, or you could put it on scaffolds for other people, depending on you know, if somebody maybe has a crater or a pothole versus sort of a diffused uh, you know, throughout the joint cartilage issue, maybe you would treat it very differently. I think that's very exciting. Nancy is asking, is there an age limit? There is not an age limit uh, to getting exosomes. Exosomes, at least the way most people, most orthopedic surgeons and regenerative medicine doctors are doing in the United States is they get them from a lab where they're harvested in millions as opposed to the few hundred stem cells you're going to get from, say, a bone marrow aspirate from your hip. They um, get them from a lab. You basically get them out of a freezer. You thaw them and you inject them just like you're getting an injection of something else. You, most of the ones that I've heard people are using are amniotic fluid stem cells, not from the fetus. I know that sort of scares people when people talk about it, but just the fluid around it. But millions of, of exosomes and amniotic fluid stem cells have been shown in animal models to be very, very good at regrowing cartilage. Now, we still need obviously more human data. Data. That's part of the reason the FDA still considers this experimental. But I will say about the FDA and experimental is PRP, which has been in the United States since 2009, and there's tons of studies that show that it works very well, randomized control studies in humans for a variety of different problems. PRP is still considered experimental by the FDA. So I wouldn't expect exosomes to be approved by the FDA in the next decade. Maybe I'll be wrong. I'd love it. I don't expect it. I also don't expect that because of that, I don't expect insurance will pay for it. But I do, I really believe exosomes are an exciting advance. I still believe it's not going to be the only thing. My guess is with what's coming with arthritis and what finally breaks the lock and helps us make cartilage like it was when you're 12 or 16 or 18, it's going to be a combination of, of treatments. Maybe it's a combination of alpha-2 macroglobulin, penicin polysulfate, and exosomes. Maybe exosomes delivered over a scaffold, but it may be a lot of different things and it probably will have to be personalized to individuals. But as far as what we have now, this is one of the more exciting things. I talked about alpha-2 macroglobulin last week. That looks very exciting as well, but I expect it's going to be some combination of treatments like this. Where we are now isn't close to as good as where we're going to be in five years, but where we are now is light years better than cortisone shots or arthroscopic cleanup surgeries, debridements, and, and I really believe 10 years from now, 15 years from now, maybe 25, we will eliminate the need for 
hip and knee replacement. Doesn't mean they won't be done because some people live really unhealthy lives and have rampant systemic inflammation or badly overweight. I, you know, some people maybe you won't be able to do it, but I think that we're going to get to a point where we can re reverse a lot of these problems. That's what, where regenerative medicine is really exciting. That same change, what I'm talking about with arthritis, we're going to start seeing over the coming decade in all fields of medicine, and I think that's really exciting. All right, if anybody has any last comments about exosomes or osteoarthritis, leave those here. While I wait for a few of those, let me tell you a couple things real quick. If you like videos like this, anti-aging orthopedics is what I like to call it, but overall health, wellness, recovery from orthopedic injuries so you can feel and perform your best regardless of age, injury, or medical history. Subscribe to this channel. If you're on YouTube, click the bell to be notified when I release a new video and when I start a live stream. If you'd like to see me as a patient, I would love that. Uh, remember, I'm a triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist in anti-aging and regenerative medicine. I would love to talk to you about all your options to help you recover from injury and get you back to what you love to do. I really believe the best way to get back to overall peak performance after a bone injury or after a joint injury, and it, you want to get the injury to heal without surgery. Instead of, instead of the surgeries and their long recoveries and you don't know how well it's going to do, there's lots of treatments available, medications, injections, not to just decrease your pain, but help you heal your injury and prevent it from coming back. But it's not even about your injury and recovery. It's getting you back to what you love to do, your favorite sport, exercising every day, even just playing with your kids and getting through your work day without pain. I want to help you improve and optimize your performance, improve strength, energy, speed, muscle, and much more. I want more than even just helping you overcome your energy injury, but recharge your body so that you can feel like you were when you were in your 20s. I would really, really love to do that. I loved being with you today and talking about something I'm really passionate about. Remember to subscribe to the podcast version of this, Better Than Ever Live. Also, Better Than Ever Daily, the one less than a minute every single day, health and wellness information that you can use. Subscribe to that, either of those, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember to join me tomorrow for Ask Dr. Geyer Live, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, earlier start on Fridays. I answer any orthopedic questions that you have. It's not medical advice again, but I'll talk about the injury, talk about surgery if it's needed, other treatments, what the recovery would involve, what the rehab would involve, all that kind of good stuff so that you can make the decision that is best for you. Nancy, you are so welcome. And uh, yeah, so everybody join us tomorrow. Sorry, Nancy, I can't get that off the screen. Join us tomorrow, and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your night.